Hello and welcome. My name is Carrie. I talk about vintage style and 1930s fashion, and today we are doing um, part two of a very special series where I talk about my experience planning my vintage style wedding. Um, I got married earlier this year, and um, if you want a full overview of my experience, my process, um, the cost, all of that good stuff, I will link that video up above and down below. And today we're going to do, we are doing part two, um, where I go super in depth into what I wore for my wedding, my process uh, for putting together my outfit, and um, of course the outfit, the accessories, all of that stuff. And my intent is to treat this video as you would looking through, um, looking at a piece in a museum, because in some ways this is sort of, um, it's a very special piece for me and uh, I have it all laid out here and um, let's get started. So we are going to start off, of course, with the dress and um, kind of build out from there. And I hope you enjoy and uh, feel free to comment what your favorite part about uh, the outfit was uh, down below. All right, so here she is, guys. Um, I have not seen her since I put her away after the wedding, after being dry cleaned, and it's she's just so, so beautiful. I'm so excited to share. Okay, um, where do I start? So I talked about the fabric. Um, this is a Silk Duchess satin from Silk Baron, and I will have that link down below. And basically what you can see here is, that I think the most prominent detail is this kind of higher curved waist, which you see in a lot of 1930s um, dresses, especially, I believe it starts to appear in like the mid 30s, maybe 33 to 36, which I think are sort of my style decades. So I'm assuming this pattern is from that point in time. And you have, and I'll do some close up shots, but it's ruched up here, right around the neckline, and I'll show you up here in a second, but my um, mother-in-law did this ruching with like a gold metallic thread. So it has this really nice, just this really nice finishing detail um, that I really didn't fully notice um, until I was putting it away. And I was like, oh man, look at that, that's so cool. Um, so you have, it's pleated up here, gathered at the neckline and the sleeves are ever so slightly puffed here and then we have or the shoulder seams rather are ever so slightly gathered and we have the long sleeves okay so we have the gathering and then we have the long sleeves with these gorgeous button details um, and we did a couple of fittings basically um, which she did two mock-ups over the course of maybe she did two mock-ups and then the actual dress within a course of maybe six to eight months, I believe. Um, and we had, I remember we had a time figuring out like what this was supposed to be. Um, basically, and, I th and it's, a, it's a, again, it's a, it's a style detail that um, we're as like modern people, we're not really necessarily aware of, um, but it's a kind of like a cuff detail that again, you see on a lot of 1930s um, style, or like 1930s dresses, basically because the sleeves are so tight um, and fitted in the arm, this cuff, this like slit here, basically it allows for extra movement in the wrist um, in addition to the side buttons. So we could have um, filled in this gap here with some fabric, but I liked, I it, it, it almost has a kind of like a something you would see in like a Renaissance painting or like a, maybe like a sci-fi, like Star Wars or something like, like a sci-fi movie with this point here. And, and it just, it added, it's like a little extra touch that 
again, you wouldn't find in modern dresses. Um, so we decided to keep that in. You can see she's finished the, this peak here very nicely. I, I've tried to do, I have another dress with a sleeve detail like this, and this is so hard to get, let alone in a very uh, persnickety fabric. And we have these glorious buttons, which not all of them, um, I think these last three here are really just more decorative, but let me tell you, we had a time, um, it took like 20 minutes to button these cuffs uh, the day of the wedding, and I'm sure we have, we, I know we, for a fact we have that in photos, uh, which I will add. Um, she did not do the covered buttons herself, I think she bought these. Um, but you can see that they're very nicely finished on the inside there. And then the cuffs, the cuffs are lined up until about just past the wrist bone. And then she finished it by hand with them, um, or rather the, she finished here with this ribbon or this bias tape and then whip stitched the bias tape which you can very, you can, it's almost invisible, but she has gently sort of slip stitched the bias tape here to this part of the cuff. And actually, if I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't be able to see it because the silk hides it so well, it hides these stitches. But yeah, basically the cuff finishes about here on the inside. So that's actually a really good tip. I, I will, I should look at this dress for um, garment construction details for my own projects. Um, yeah, so we have, the button sleeves, which people were ooing and aahing about, and you know, for good reason. And the dress itself then kind of, let me see if I can show you, it finishes in a nice um, A-line, really. So it just kind of skims the hips, and it finishes basically right at the top of my feet. Or no, I think at the top of my feet if I wasn't wearing heels. Um, so it was a little bit long, for, but it was perfect for the heels. And I remember um, my mother-in-law was very apprehensive because of like when she was finishing it, um, very nervous about cutting it too short. Uh, so she added, I think, some extra inches onto it and it ended up being perfect after she hemmed it. So big relief uh, to have it, you know, the correct length, which is obviously key, especially for a wedding dress, especially uh, when you are wearing heels. So yeah, she just, with that, now there are other things added onto it, but this is kind of the core front. Very, in a way, very simple. Um, I remember what we had to do though with the mock-up, with the two mock-ups. So she did two mock-ups in a sim similar, in fabrics that were a similar weight to this Duchess satin. Um, I believe they were polyester, but they had a similar weight to this so that she could get used to how things would um, pleat and gather and hang, which is key for when you're doing a project. Um, and I remember the first, the first mock-up was just basically the pattern unaltered. And the, this waistline I think was too high. Um, so we had to fix that and then on the back, we had to make some adjustments as well. But maybe, So we had to do basically um, two different mock-ups. It was a whole thing, but obviously the end result fit perfectly, but we had to adjust it for my proportions. Um, now the back, the back is um, more complicated, definitely more elegant. I think what I wasn't expecting, because you don't really see it on the pattern illustration um, because it focuses mainly on the front, is this really amazing kind of curved, well you have the curved waist seam that kind of continues from the front, but then you have these really interesting, really interesting, um, you have these really interesting kind of pleated sections here on the back, which almost feels kind of Victorian in a way, like this sort of like the pleating, um, it just adds this kind of this little bit of flair to the back of the skirt, which 
yeah, it, feel, it feels like, I mean, this could have been some of the romantic, neo-romantic influence that was coming in in the mid-1930s, um, but it has this kind of older, um, almost like a 19th century kind of vibe to it with like the really like the, the heavily pleated back of the skirt. Um, and this was something that we had to adjust also because it wasn't sitting correctly. And so we had to raise, I think we had to raise these pleated lines up so they hit really at like, we had to adjust this really so it hit at the back of, at the top of my hip bone um, to create that fullness on the, like to create that fullness through like, through the hip area. Um, and it's really, really pretty. Um, one of my, I think it was my favorite, one of my favorite style details of this whole thing because it's really unexpected. Not, again, not something you see in modern wedding dresses or in modern dresses in general. And then it sits up here. Let me see if I can, I'll show you this in a close up, but it has, it just has a button closure with a little um, loop on the back here. This is all open in the back. Um, the bodice on the inside is lined in a lighter weight. I think it's a lighter weight silk. Um, it's not the same silk, but it's, it's a lighter weight in a very, very similar color. Um, you can see a bit more it's of the shoulder puff on the ends here. And then we finished it with a side zipper. Wedding dresses at the time, because zippers didn't come in until the 40s, so this would have been just like a button snap closure, but we decided to finish it with a zipper just for some extra security. And again, it flares on the bottom here, and we have, again, the buttons and all of that. So this is the core the core of the wedding dress, if you will. But we were also uh, not gonna stop there. The pattern has some other surprises and I will show you those in just a second. Okay, so I'm not going to put this on, but I will show you photos where we've illustrated it. Um, this, so the dress also has a train, as I mentioned in the video from last week. And this is the train here. Um, again, made out of the same Duchess satin material. What we decided to do is, um, so the train, actually, I'll show you here. So it has these little hooks, just these little hooks and eyes. And it, those hooks and eyes attach to the back of this curve. Um, what my mother-in-law did was she created very tiny, um, like self-knotted little like loops. And that, and you can barely, see, like I could barely see it. <laughs> and I'm standing like, you know, really close to the dress. Um, and these hooks and eyes hook onto the back using those belt loops and it was very secure. Um, I wore this train for the ceremony and you know the photos after the wedding like Im immediately after took it off um, for the reception but this definitely it made a very nice entrance and I mean when else are you gonna wear a fabulous train like this? We had um, a lot of discussion about how we wanted it to look in the front um, what we did, because the end of the train, or like the back of the train, it's very wide. What we ended up doing was creating a belt that goes around the front of the dress, almost like a, I think you can see it in some of the photos, barely. It's almost, so it's a wider belt. It attaches on the other side. And so it almost has this kind of obi effect to it. Um, yeah, and I'll put up some photos here as I'm talking to sort of illustrate what it looked like on the day. But yeah, so if you can imagine the front of the dress, and then we have the belts here, and then this train in the back. And the nice thing too about the train um, that my mother-in-law did very, particularly very intentionally is the this train pattern here it um, finishes just at the point where you have these gorgeous back pleats so you can so that the train isn't hiding the pleats it's sort of highlighting them in a very particular way and then the train you have kind of 
flowing down the back of the dress and then onto the floor just a little bit. Um, yeah, it was fabulous. Not very heavy. I did have to, people, I mean, people were very nice and very mindful of it. It did, this got stepped on a lot. So it was kind of um, definitely, you know, dirty by the end of it. But as you can see, um, my dry cleaner um, got rid of everything, basically. And um, you would not have known that this was stepped on and <laughs> a little bit gray by the end of the, end of the ceremony, um, end of the photo shoot. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the train. That's uh, style detail number one. So we also had, um, the way that the day worked basically is we, I put this dress on, um, we had, I think, oh, and then for the first look I wore, and also for the reception, I wore this belt made out of the same material. Um, we added a little rhinestone kind of brooch as like a, a fake belt buckle if you will, and I'll show that to you in a second. Um, yeah, so I wore that. The belt, I believe, was, so that that came right across here to create an additional sort of point of emphasis in the dress. And wore the belt, um, wore that belt for the first look, came back, took that off, put on the train, and went down, got the veil, got married, that whole thing. Um, that small, small detail. And then after the ceremony and uh, pictures, um, and before like you know meeting all of the guests at the reception just took off the belts and the veil the, the train and the veil rather and then added the belts and that was kind of a way to change up the look a little bit without having to change into a whole other dress and and all that stuff so it just added a nice little point of emphasis and um yeah so that was i feel like the dress was able to do a lot with just these changing out of um of accessories or changing out of these style additions, if you will. And I just wanted to show you here. So we have, and um, this is the gathering of the neckline, and I'll show you uh, some other accessories that I wore with this piece, but I just wanted to show you like all of that yummy detail with the gold thread. It's just, it's so good. It's so good. It's such a nice, just, it's just there. It's just very subtle. And then again, we have the back with where you can see these slight, slightly puffed sleeves. Oh, this fabric is so yummy. You can just feel the crinkle of, of silk. And we have, I'll show you just uh, these pleating details on the back here. Uh, it's so pretty and oh my god this feels just it just feels so nice it's so nice I have this um, so my mother-in-law um, she came to stay with us I think sh a month or two before the wedding or something but I remember um, she, she was finishing she had to hem the dress because she wanted to make sure that obviously it was long enough and I remember I have this very clear memory of her um, laying everything out and my spouse was away at this point he was off doing something and we were like okay now's the time to try on the dress when he's not here and uh, get that figured out and I remember her um, hemming it wearing like white cotton gloves because you because of, of just being like not wanting to you know catch any thread or anything like that so just sitting there with white cotton gloves hemming it by hand just very yeah just it's a, it was a lovely um, project for us to work on together and really uh, bond over sewing in a very deep way and she she loved um, making this project and puzzling it out and uh, it, yeah it was such an honor for me and it made it just that much more special and has made it that much more special and um, yeah so this is my lovely wedding dress uh, and I will also now go on to talking about all of the other uh, non-fabric I should say accessories uh, that I wore on top of it to really elevate the look and um, make it very vintage. So, so this was the dress, but because I wanted to be a bit extra, I <laughs> and because we were getting married in February and who knows what the weather was going to be, I also wanted a coat. And for some reason, I've always wanted like an extra something to wear. I mean, I love winter and outerwear and things like that. So. 
I wanted just an extra glamorous coat. And um, I chose, and, I'll be sh and I will show you that in just a second. All right, so this is my wedding coat. It is um, from a pattern uh, from 1931 by Decades of Style, and I will link that down below. It is so great. I got so many questions about this coat, especially when we were out uh, doing first look photos, which is the main time that I wore it. And um, yeah, people were just like, what is this coat? Like, tell me about it. Um, so yeah, this is from 1931. And not the code is not, but the pattern, the style is from 1931. And theoretically, this is what it's not inconceivable that someone would have, even though like the it's not the same year as the dress, like it's you know, if this is like one's best coat or like one's mother's or you know, sister's best coat, it's not inconceivable that like someone would have borrowed a coat from an a few years before to wear on their wedding day, especially if it was as extra and fancy as this so yeah and i think it's what's very interesting about this style and you'll see it perhaps more clearly if you look at the pattern is that you can see a lot of um 1920s like opera coat elements in this piece um because as you move on in the 30s the coats get very structured and in a way um and this just has a lot of it's it kind of retains the um 1920s like style lines in a way and particularly like in something like this shawl collar. And then you have, again, you can't really see it because of the, the fabric, but there's almost this kind of peplum type piece here, which is kind of, it has this nice drape to it. Yeah, you can't entirely see it, but like the shawl collar and the, the, um, the sleeves kind of flare out a little bit and you have this um, kind of side fastening here as well. So it just has a lot of um, 1920s and also maybe Paul Poiret elements to it, um, even though we're in, even though this is technically from the early 30s. So you just sort of see the, the fashion history in a certain way in a style like this, which is very cool. Um, and I also think like this was my moment of, um, actually I'll put it on. Um, I feel like part of having a coat like this is also to um, actualize a childhood fantasy of having that coat that Lena Lamont wears in Singing in the Rain when you first see them on the red carpet and she comes out in this very um, stylized idea of what like a 1920s like movie star would wear and I feel like maybe that planted the seed uh, to have a piece like this. So yeah, it's really great. Um, the fabric is so yummy. It's this faux Persian fur, uh, lamb's wool, I think, fur from Mood Fabrics. I'll link it down below. As of recording, they still have it. And it comes in other colors too. It comes in brown and black as well. Um, it's just so soft and buttery and just, mm. um, and it, the colors have also go obviously really well with the wedding dress and yeah, and then um, it's lined in just a heavier, I think, lining of some type. I don't know um, what the lining is, but yeah, it's really nice. And this is something that I suggest to um, if you are planning or thinking about what you want to wear for your wedding. It's such a special day, and um, but you may not wear your wedding dress again ever, even if you keep it, you know, for years and decades to come. And I suggest if you're up for it, having some having or getting a piece like this, whoa, that hook is about to fall. Okay. <laughs> I recommend having a piece like this because I'll wear this coat again, absolutely 100%, um, wh whenever the weather or the occasion uh, calls for it. And when I wear it, I'll be like, hey, I wore this for my wedding. This was my wedding, part of my wedding outfit. And it's just a little thing that you can kind of carry with you. And whenever you put it on, you think about that special time in your life, that special day when people, you know, showed up to show their love and support for you. So recommend a piece like this. Um, obviously, if you wanna make this for yourself, <laughs> you're more than welcome to. Um, I did not make it, my mother-in-law made this as well. Uh, she loves making coats, apparently, so this was fun for her. And um, I can't speak to if there's any interlining or anything like that in there, but um, yeah, it's not, I did make this, I did like a test run of this in a brown 
like polyester velvet, I think last year, and um, it was very easy. So, I mean, I think putting on the collar was a bit challenging, but clearly she knew what she was doing. So yeah, I'll link this down below if you are interested in making one for yourself. Okay, and now we are gonna talk about um, accessories, other accessories um, and all that fun stuff. So I'll start with the shoes. Uh, these are the Hazel Pumps by American Duchess. They were so comfortable. I was quite nervous about <laughs> wearing heels. Hang on. I was quite nervous about wearing heels on my wedding day because I don't, these are two and a half inch. And the most I try to keep when I do wear heels, which is not every day, um, the most I try to keep, the most height that I'll do is like two inches. So this was, you know, a half inch taller than I'm used to. And obviously, you know, I, I did, I was afraid of like tripping and stuff, um, going to the ceremony and all of that. Um, but, and I was apprehensive of that these would be beautiful, but not very comfortable. So I did end up buying a pair of um, ivory leather flats. Uh, as it turns out, I did not need them. <laughs> um, uh, so these were extremely comfortable. I barely had to break them in. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend these shoes. They were just like the perfect style for these, this event. Uh, the Hazel Pumps, they are, um, I believe they are 1930s um, style heels. I do also have them in black. Have not worn those yet, but these I can 100% recommend. I think you could also dye them if you wanted to. Um, yeah, the bows are super cute. They were the perfect height for the dress, so the dress just kind of barely skimmed the floor, and they just were such a great look, and they showed up great uh, in the photographs. And yeah, I was able to stand in them, um, jump around to Mr. Brightside in these shoes, and walk on, you know, brick cobble kind of streets and stuff. So yeah, very comfortable. Definitely recommend, and I will link them, of course, down below. Next, we have um, sort of hair accessories and other things. So I knew that I wanted, I'll go over to the light here so you can kind of see it better. Um, I wanted some type of headpiece. This is a, um, obviously it's a headband. Uh, it's from this Etsy shop, Amora Treasures, which I did link in my last video and I will link it here as well. This is um, headband. I believe the main point of focus here is um, I believe these were clips at some point or something. Basically, she takes she takes um, vintage, other kinds of vintage jewelry and repurposes them. So these clips became um, obviously part of a headpiece and really beautiful. Again, as I said in the last video, you really can't match the quality of vintage, even vintage costume jewelry. Um, I don't know if that's what would qualify, if this would qualify as costume jewelry, but this the level of detail in the metalwork and things again like it just it just took i think the outfit to a whole other level um as opposed to like you know getting a vintage inspired piece um and yeah and it always feels good to repurpose old things i think so yeah very very beautiful um definitely added a nice little touch and it looked great both under the veil and then without the veil it just added added a little extra a little extra something and then I also had these two, I think these are from Amore Treasures as well, but again, uh, dress clips that have been repurposed as hairpins. And I got these um, to act as veil pins. So the instructions for the veil um, basically required clips and the veil did actually come with clips, but I swapped these out because the clips were a little too modern for my taste so and i really liked these because they have the little green rhinestone detail and of course one of our wedding colors was emerald green and i thought these just really kind of was like a nice little um homage to that and just again the detail is stunning and I was worried that they wouldn't like stay or something, but yeah, they were there throughout the whole evening. And again, these just are things that I will absolutely wear again um, when I am able to. So yeah, you can see the backs here. Very, very pretty. And then speaking of dress clips, these are, that's what uh, these are. These are dress clips that I got on Etsy. Um, 
from a different shop and I wanted these dress clips to act as um, to give interest to the neckline uh, partially because that was what was on the the, the pattern illustration and I was like yeah I'm, I'm just going to replicate this and these were really the perfect size they really added a whole other little dimension and I think apart from the buttons the veil and the shoes like I got so many questions about these because people just you know don't know what these are um so these are dress clips essentially um, think of like brooches but with like with a clip with like a what do you call it not not with a pin back but like these like clip onto the neckline and um yeah it's it's, it's kind of it's similar to brooches but not exactly the same thing um yeah and they again and I, it was a little bit difficult to find a set of brooches or of <laughs> dress clips um, but I was able to do that and these were the perfect size and again they just the quality and again and just the the detail of the metalwork just added that whole like it just added a little extra layer of um, authenticity to the outfit I think and yeah recommend dress clips if you want a different way to sort of spice up an outfit whether it's for your wedding or not because um, yeah people will ask you what is that <laughs> um, in in a good way of course so yeah i have dress clips here and then i did get this um beaded purse from etsy i think this is from the 60s i didn't use it quite um as much as i thought i would but i think it is good to sort of have this on hand especially if your venue is far from uh, the bridal suite just so you can keep you know whatever makeup and things uh, that you need um, for the day so yeah, I got this on Etsy. I think it's from the 1960s. And yeah, it was a nice little addition uh, to the outfit. I did want to take a moment too to talk about uh, my wedding ring, if you can focus in on that. Um, this is a vintage, of course, wedding band. It's from the 40s. And just, I, I love it. It has this these little like flower kind of engraving details on them. I got this from a vintage store in, I believe they're in Minneapolis, called Filigree Jewelers. Um, bought it online. Highly recommend, because um, I was looking for something, again, with that kind of Art Nouveau sort of style, and I think these the little flower details uh, really are kind of a nod to that. And yeah, I think, yeah, it's from the 40s, and the shop was super great with getting it to me on time, and it was packaged very securely. So if you're looking for either a vintage wedding band or just some great uh, vintage and antique jewelry, I will um, link them down below because they were fantastic to work with. So yeah, just wanted to go over those. And oh, and then here is the pin that I used as in place of a belt buckle uh, for the um, other belts on my wedding dress. And as you can see kind of here, these used, I think these used to be a set of dress clips, but they've been converted into a pin back. And yeah, that is, that was again, another way to add a bit of a design feature, a bit of a statement um, and give some emphasis to the, the waistline of the dress. So yeah. And again, something that I will definitely wear um, in years to come and think of my wedding every time. So that's great. That's basically along with the coat and um, the dress, that is my wedding outfit, wedding ensemble. So I, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and I will see you next time.